Hello everyone, La13 Scale here, also known as Scale, and welcome back to what's probably the last episode of Slay the Princess. I do hope there's a bit more left to this, not just like I could have tacked this on at the end of the last one, but whatever. We get to see what happens now that our memory returns and we touch the mirror for the last time. She's gone. Cool. Probably gas. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? No. Oh, there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Also, I'm still sick. Same recording session. I just wanted to finish out this game. <laughs> um. But it feels so bad. Yeah, right, I know. Looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. Oh, it is. It's calling us. And not in a good way. It's okay. I'll see you on the other side. It's going to be okay. Okay. If you say so, we'll trust you. Can we trust you? Yeah. So we approach the mirror. Gaze into my reflections and see the ghastly nature of myself. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. Is there nothing? You are nothing at all. Oh, good. So no ghosts, but I'm... Um, oh, what's that? But that isn't right. Oh, because I gave everything I am to the princess. To the entity to make her whole. Oh, that makes sense. But that isn't right. You can't be nothing. You refocus your gaze and then you see it. A figure, faint, and veiled in shadow, just beyond the reflection. Are you I me? I think you know what I am. You're the narrator. A crack slides down the center of the mirror, splitting the image in the glass in two. And then another crack forms, and another, and another, turning the mirror into jagged shards of broken glass. Oh. Oh. Oh, there's eyes, and they blink, and I don't like this. And do I... Do I go up here now? <sighs> so, you're the narrator. I was wondering if I'd ever see you. What are you? Are you something like me? If you're not me, then what are you? I have so many questions for you. Does it hurt when pieces of you break off like that? I'm sorry, I don't want to destroy you. Will it help if I look away and stop asking questions? Every time I ask you something, it's like a piece of you breaks. Are you a part of me or are you something else? Are you the one who... You're the one that wants me to slay the princess and why? The narrator. Yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. But you were never supposed to see me. Huh. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. Interesting. I've met you many times. Have you been the same all along? Um... Where's the one that asks why it wants me to destroy the princess? Oh, I guess it's gone now. I'm aware. And if I were you, I'd be more precious about your time. Oh. So you know it's breaking and I only have so many questions I can ask? I haven't, and that's by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. Huh. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Huh. Um, after everything you've done to us, you think... Anyone deserves to live. You're not me, then what are you? I have so many questions for you. Um. So, 
you do know about the looping. How many times I've met you, you denied it being as a possibility, so why did you lie to me? People out there beyond the walls of the construct, do they know about this? Do they know that you want me to do for them? Um... Of course not. The only way this construct could function was if nobody knew what it was doing. Huh. But the bones of the universe are old. Huh. It's on the cusp of its dying breath, and the people out there are consumed with thoughts of oblivion. Interesting. When the patterns are wiped from the sand, when the board is reset, who will remember them? All I've done is give them a chance to live outside of the shadow of the end. Interesting. Um... Let's see... Why Any other version me? of me you talked to was just that, a version of me. It wasn't me. As okay. to why they lied... Perhaps they thought that admitting to it would have pushed you to certain realizations that would have made finishing your task impossible. Maybe they were just in denial. I'm sure many of them were convinced that they had to be the first version of them you'd encountered. Anything else would have been too existentially unpleasant. That's a good point. Okay. For all I know, each of those other versions of me could have had entirely different understandings of how this construct works. Who's to say which of them are right and which of them are wrong, really? Except oh, for me. Yeah. I can tell you for a fact that I'm right. But how do we how do you know that? Um, what You're is my the training? quiet, the god I made to rid the world of death. Oh. I'm the long quiet, which is why when the narrator goes away, all that's left is me. So it's destroying itself, so then I become the long quiet. I don't want to be a god. I want to be me. Yeah. God, I always knew that I was special. Jesus Christ. Um, are you a god? Or were you a god? That's a good question. What is the princess? Did you make her too? She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. Oh. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. So I tucked a part of myself into the folds of this construct to guide you. Uh, this isn't the end just yet. You can still destroy her and save no. everyone. You were made to do this single task, and you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. Nope. If I destroy her, won't I be alone? If you made us, then I want you to know this has been torture. Um, you know that things. You know that things won't be worse if I destroy her. What would it be like to live in a world without her? You have told me all this from the start. She's capable of becoming whatever people want her to be. Can't I just will her into something small? Why? Okay, of all things, why is she a princess? Why couldn't she be an ant or slice of soggy bread? What if neither of us leave this place? Does that work? Can we just stay here together and leave people out there alone? Pretty sure death is good actually, important even. Um it wouldn't work. Her nature as the shifting mound makes it so nothing can last forever as it is now. It wouldn't matter how long the two of you waited. Eventually she would find a way to leave. And then everything would change. Everything would face oblivion. So she's change and I'm oblivion? And until then, the clock ticks on. Uh... 
Um, let's see. Oh, even the background music stopped. Um, so then what does that make him? Let's see. She's capable of becoming whatever people believe her to be. No. No. In life, I was painfully mortal. Okay. A witness to the end of days. I held the fear of death in my heart and saw oblivion threaten the very memory of everything I knew and everyone I loved. I needed to do something, so I made you. And I made her. And I made this place to hold you both. Oh. <laughs> You... Um... Made a of what? of life and death. The endless pattern of creation and destruction. I tore it in two and shaped the fraying threads into you and her. That's why this looks like threads. <laughs> Run out of questions. Hey. I'm not going to slay her and I want you to know that before you die for good. There's no reasoning with a god. Even one you've woven into existence yourself. I've said my piece, and my time is up. I'm sorry. I'm just an echo. And every echo fades away. Sorry, narrator. As the final fragment of glass shatters, you see yourself with newfound clarity. The narrator was right. You are the long quiet, a vast and nascent god. And it's finally time you wake up. All of this is you. Proceed to the cabin for one last time. When you arrive at the heart of things, there is no final vessel for you to bear witness to. There is nothing for you to find. So what's going on here? Oh, all of her came at me. Oh. She is... A I can finally see you. And you can finally see me. Weird. It's been so long. Oh, been and my heart has ached for this We're moment. I've missed you dearly. Um... I miss you too. Do you know about the echo? Did you hear our conversation? I'm a long quiet, but I don't know what that means. Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. Bizarre. Okay. I'm the long quiet, but I don't know what Names that means. Names are their attempts to capture that which cannot be captured. They call me the Shifting Mound. A pale imitation of what I actually am. So what happens now? Ever the passive player. Always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice, and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? Look, my perspective on death is that it's actually a very important and necessary process of things. Things need to die in order for change to continue to happen. Um, and I think a really good example of this goes no further than, honestly, Arcane. I don't want to say Freerin, because Freerin talks about how change happens for people over a long drawn out period of time. 
But if you look at the immortal character that is, and I'm just going to bring my leg up a little further for this. If you look at the immortal character in Arcane, who lives for such a long time, he... Oh, God, this, it's been... I, I literally watched the first season when it came out, but the immortal character turns to another character who has uh, created significant scientific advancements, and he wants to utilize these significant uh, scientific advancements to progress their society at a rapid rate, and it could mean super life-changing things for people. And the immortal character, or the long-lived character, um, says that... He says that they should conti continue to test it for a decade or so before they go any further. And that's such a problem because to this immortal character, a decade is a blink of an eye. Um, because the longer that you live, like uh, a year is like one less percentage of your life, right? Like when you're five years old, a year feels like it's forever, right? Because it's one fifth of your entire lifespan. But when, you know, you're 30, a year of your life feels so short because it's one thirtieth of your lifespan. So when you're immortal like that, and you can't die, and you've lived for two, three hundred years, it is one three hundredth of your lifespan. So saying that, you know, ten years, that's like no time to them. So, uh, it's, it's actually massively important that they continue. And the immortal character also has hang-ups from a previous war that ended a long time ago. That the people who fought that war and the beliefs that they held don't exist anymore for those people and yet he still continues to judge them based on those old outdated beliefs because of the trauma that he has built up and has had over that um not that he hasn't tried to you know work on it at all although i don't think that he has but that perspective doesn't offer anything better or new anymore so i think that death is a very important thing as much as it sucks there's so many stories we left unfinished, can we really just leave? Do you have to say all of this? Is that why it keeps falling on me? Let's talk this through. I have so many questions I need to answer before I can choose. I won't let you out. No, that's not what I want. If you were always going to become this, then what was the point of me doing anything? Did it even matter what roads I walked if they all led to this moment? No. Um, was there another way that this can't be just destroying. I was told I was going to have to slay you. I think it's time for us to leave this place, but I don't know how to leave. No, we keep her alive. Um, do you have a say in all of this? Of course I have a say in all of this. You and I share reflections of each other's burdens. Just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. That's a good point. Um, if you're always going to become this. No. I think we just leave. I don't know how to leave, Nothing though. Nothing brings me greater joy than to hear those words. The final peace lies with you. Do I become part of you? Free yourself. You fall into yourself. The body of an ancient creature stirs from its hibernation. And you feel sensation in limbs you once couldn't fathom. Everything here except for her is you. You feel your wings spanning a, on a cosmic scale, but twisted and crumpled and bound in agonizing tension to a finite plane. You can feel the glass of the construct pressing in on you, confining you across infinite sides and infinite angles. You push back and strain against it, but it does not yield. I love you. Take her hand. Oh. 
all at once, the unyielding tension breaks as I take more pictures. Oh, this is fantastic. You are free, and she is with you. It's magnificent. And we're together. There are no words come in the way. There are no words, no thoughts to describe absolute reality. Something that simply is. So what happens now? Everything. Just like it always has been. And just like it always will be. Step into the infinite. With her. Oh, ho, ho. You and she step forward into a thousand dawns and a thousand sunsets, each of which contain a thousand more. You exist and you're aware just as you always have been and just as you always will be. Though conflict is in your nature, the two of you will never be alone and the two of you will never know fear. You and she are finally home. Hey, we did it. By Tony and Abby Howard. Aw. All of the voices in your head were done by one guy, which I knew. Man. Man, we did so much. Like, they, they have so many people on this team. Good on them. And the Patreons. No, oh, look at the family. So cute. Spoons the cat. Finish the game. Good ending doesn't count. Thank you so much for playing as an expression of our gratitude. Here's a track order for the special playlist just for you. Oh, if you'd like to take a screenshot, and you can hide the UI by hitting H. Oh, oh that's cool. by hitting H. That would have been nice for when I took all those pictures. But oh well. Oh. Well. That was Slay the Princess. This was such like a more grandiose story than I thought it was going to be. And I... I really liked it. I don't know if it necessarily was saying anything actually profound at the end. Um, besides, like, the entire story has been about the importance of different perspectives and how different perspectives can vastly change everything. But I don't... Oh, I love that this part of the UI has the long dark in it, which is, which is us, which I love. Um, but yeah... I don't know, I was thinking that the ending, that by getting the princess and by, like, us joining together and accepting an eternity of, like, change and death and everything that comes then and after was going to be more, I don't know, like, more life lesson-y than it was. And maybe it's because in my life I've already learned whatever lesson that this is trying to teach me but it, it feels profound and doesn't at the same time, and I can't put the words to it. I am not at all, like, slamming this. It just was different than my expectation. In a lot of ways, in, in ways I don't know how to necessarily phrase, if that makes any bit more sense. Because I don't I don't necessarily know what I expected when we got to the end, but I did expect the love story that we got. And I don't know, I think I was expecting more romance, but how do you do conventional romance about two gods? Or at the very least, it would have been interesting to see our face if our hands still continued to exist. I do like the idea of the princess and the dragon ending up together. 
it's very interesting. And I wonder why it is on the void, the long dark, to kill change. Like why why is why is it our task to end her that way, you know? I feel like there's a lot I don't know or understand. And I think it's maybe because I didn't ask the right questions to the narrator. But it said I'm out of questions. But still that was really interesting. Well, next time we're going to be playing something different. So I look forward to seeing you guys then. In the meantime, take care, everybody.